So we might get started then. So welcome everyone. Welcome to another Connect and Share Friday morning, 10 a.m. every week. And uh, we have a, uh, a big morning lined up for you with lots of different content. Uh, we're just talking about everyone's getting back to real, some sort of normality. So hopefully that uh, this is a sign of all things to come as we get into the, the March, <laughs> to March and is only uh, just over a week away. So um, let me acknowledge our traditional owners on which the lands that we all come from today and may I pay my respects to all elders past, present and emerging. And, uh, and in the true form of what they do is connecting with their country, we need to take on a lot of their experience and expertise and how they do that and bring that to our forefront in how we uh, activate our activities on the lands in which we have them. So uh, let me jump into the need to, to knows and um, like every week I feel like there's just so much going on so these are a great way you can connect with some of those key points if you haven't seen them in the members newsletters um, or if you haven't seen them in other places this is a great way you can keep up to speed and as you know all the connect and shares are recorded and put on our YouTube channel so you can look back and see if you missed anything. So the first thing, and I thought this was full and all, all done, but we had four people that couldn't make it now because of programs, which is great news. Uh, so they've pulled out of the, uh, the, week, the uh, must class, which is going to be held on the 29th of March down in Canberra at the Southern Cross Club. So if you were interested or if you are interested in this, you really probably need to jump in pretty quick and let me know. It is a full day. And the content of which we will be covering is quite um, in depth, but only around four different topics. The first, uh, Charles Trindle is uh, an amazing speaker and, um, and he has actually been very integral in the communication to national parks about Aboriginal uh, connection to country. So there's a, a whole two hour session on really understanding how our Indigenous communities work uh, with the country and things that we can take on board and understand as operators. The second one is the AAAS, which we know the importance of this. We know the importance of how we integrate the AAAS into our systems for the risk management processes we have in place. And it will become even more important as we start working with some of the, um, the policy makers in understanding the, the um, intricacies around the AAAS and, and trying to work with us on uh, communicating the same language. Um, and then the fourth one, sorry, the third one there is about essential skills. You know, what are the soft skills that we need to apply in the outdoors? And Mandy Baker's got some great research in this and, and we'll certainly bring that to life at the masterclass. And the fourth one, you've got to put up with me, unfortunately, um, but it's around marketing and it's your marketing 101 of, you know, how are you getting your adventure tourism operation or your activity out into connecting with your people and uh, the people that are going to uh, touch base with you in the future. So as I say, four seats left. If you want to jump in, please do let me know today and I will certainly lock you in. The last call for ACT uh, outdoor operators for our campaign. So as you may remember last week, we talked about the grant that uh, Canberra Tourism has provided Outdoors New South Wales and ACT to get the word out about what there is to do in the outdoors in Canberra. So if you are an operator, you'd be silly not to join us. It doesn't cost you anything. You just need to let us know so that we include you in that, uh, in that content. The Nature Play Strategy, the workshop number two was held last week, uh, this week, feels like last week already, this week, and a uh, great discussion on where that strategy is up to. Uh, for those that may not know, Sam Crosby, unfortunately, is leaving as of today, Centennial Parkland. She's been a great advocate for Nature Play, and uh, it will be a very sad loss, but I'm sure uh, Centennial Parklands are certainly going to keep on the process, and with someone you might remember, Dr Amanda Lloyd. She's actually working on this with them, so I think it's in good hands now, and, uh, and and it will continue on. Um, so good work on what Sam got started and Amanda will finish and she'll present this to you next week at our Connect and Share uh, at 10 a.m. So uh, join us for that one. A massive grant opportunity, guys. This one's come out from Destination New South Wales this week. And there's two different areas that you would be eligible for if you're interested in uh, updating your product 
The first one is the Tourism Product Development Fund, up to $10,000 in grants to operators, and you can update your product or experience with that money. The second one is the Experience Enhancement Fund. Now, this is obviously a larger chunk of money, up to $150,000, but it's got to be matched with funds uh, to upgrade star ratings, upgrade business, leisure activities, anything that you have been eyeing off but not being able to afford, uh, now is a great time because if you apply for this grant, uh, you could actually have half of your costs saved. So jump on the website there. We have a guest with us. Andrew, I can see you there. Thank you for jumping on. Um, Andrew, I've, I touched base with him briefly during the week, but I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let him talk to the uh, what he's actually doing, because I think this would actually tie in with a lot of guys that are online today. I'm looking at a few of you there. Um, so, Andrew, I might pass over to you and let you talk to what you're doing. Oh, you're just on mute. Let me on. There we go. There you go. Good, good. Thanks, Lily. Um, thanks for having me on. I just um, I wanted to, to have a talk to some of your members. Uh, we've got an opportunity. We're creating another series of Outlier TV, and we're looking for, um, well, Outlier itself, the TV is a show that in, uh, shares inspiring stories of ordinary people doing ordinary things outside the comfort zone. Um, sorry, doing extraordinary things outside the comfort zone. And we're looking for entrepreneurs, athletes, and or adventurers who've been successful at following, following their passions and turning them into a business so that we can then use the stories to inspire others to do the same. Um, so if you've got an inspiring message or a story or a business or something that's very compelling that you feel would be, um, you'd like to share, we have a submission process. Um, the big things for us in regards to that are the story itself. Um, so outlier, an outlier is a person, place or thing who's different to others in the group. So my best analogy on that is kind of like an island is to the mainland. Um, so we like to share those unique difference stories. Um, it's about, we celebrate difference to make a difference. So if you've got a, um, I guess an out there or an outlierish a story or a business or a thing that you do or a location that you're at because the other part about what we do is it's got to be visually sexy as well so we love the you notice the screen behind me was in sacred islands in fiji and we're on a dive charter yacht the whole business around a dive charter yacht and so that was the birthplace of fiji behind me had a bonfire on the beach at 4 a.m and that's where we started the interview with uh, joe don who was the dive charter master for for um Big Blue Fiji. So it's very important for me as well when I am filming this stuff that we're in uh, outlierish locations and obviously being outdoors in New South Wales and ACT, it's a fantastic um, fit in my opinion as far as what you guys do. So um, if anyone has any questions or would like to submit something, I'll put I'll put the link in the chat, uh, Laurie, for, for anyone if they want to put in a submission. Yeah, that'd be great, Andrew. If anyone has any questions, just fire away. Does anyone have any questions? Because I'm looking at uh, some significant people online that uh, could certainly <laughs> put their hands up for this already. Um, any questions, guys? They're all being silent today. Good day, Hugh here. Hi, Hugh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as you can probably hear from the sound of me, it was a, it was a late one last night, although not partying, but just a late one. Um, Andrew, this this looks really awesome, and I, um, I might touch base um, later on and say good day if that's okay. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so when you go to that link, there's you can contact me directly if you want as well. Um, Andrew at outlier.tv if you want to email, or I can happily give my phone number if you want to talk on the phone as well. Uh, that that's great. Andrew at outliertv.com.au. No, out, Andrew at outlier.tv. Yeah. My mobile in the chat as well. Yeah. Got that one now. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, great. My chat's, oh, there it is. There's, I was going to say it's disappeared, but it's, it keeps running away from me when I click it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. No, that's fabulous. And uh, we've got, well, Hughes from the Blue Mountains and, and does some incredible things. Um, 
I'm looking at David Chitty as I do this, Mulga. <laughs> I'm looking at all of you, even Rob. Um, yeah, I think there's quite a few different opportunities there. So guys, click on that link, let Andrew know what you do. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on, Andrew. Really appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me, Laurie. I'll, I'll leave the call now. I'm actually just raced from the gym, so I'm super sweaty. So I'll uh, go. <laughs> Okay, well, before you go, I think Dom's got a quick question. Now, Dom's from Queensland. He's he, We work together in our state. So, Dom, did you want to ask Andrew something quick? Yeah, thanks, Lois. Very quickly, I was wondering just what's sort of involved, Andrew, in the process? Like, a, is it a one-day filming? It is a multi-day thing? Like, I guess that's a question, I suppose, you know, the operators might want to... Yeah, it's a know. great question. I think depends on the... So, the format is we'd sit down for an hour or so and do the interview. It's just a straight interview to camera uh, with the two of us. Um, and then what we do is from that interview, we go, well, what, what did you talk about? And we'll go and get a lot of B-roll footage um, based around the, the, the facility or whatever. You'll obviously have existing footage. You'll have historical footage that we might be able to grab, uh, biographical footage, etc. cetera. Um, so the more of that you have, the better, because it means we don't have to get it. Um, and then obviously too, for me, it's important. I'd love to have an experience of what you do. So that kind of helps the process as well. I my background, I had a golf show. It was called golf getaway. And it was essentially golf and tourism. We'd go to the golf resort, we'd film the golf resort in the morning, the golf, like a course. And then we'd go and do the tourist attractions and hotels and stuff in the afternoon. Um, so usually we aim for a day per shoot, providing there's B-roll footage. And if we have enough time too, we'll try and help you with, you know, creating a little promo video as well. We basically just talking to camera about five key points about your business and we overlay the B-roll on that as well. And that's like a little bonus for you guys. But um, yeah, I guess it just depends. Like I've spent the first series, I spent seven weeks and six, no, six weeks in seven countries. So we, we started in New Zealand, went to Fiji, went to uh, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Bali, and back to Australia twice. Um, and we were shooting, like just as an example, we had uh, Canyons Japan, it's the biggest outdoor um, adventure company in Japan. We had Hakuba Snow Sports School, which is a, a world-renowned um, ski school up there. We had, um, there's a snow tour company. We did a whole piece up there in front of the um, Nagano Olympics ski jump. So beautiful location. So that's the other thing, if you've got, great locations and it requires us to go to those locations that might take a bit of time as well so we usually try to aim for a day but it all depends we'd sort of maybe come up the day earlier and you know shoot for the full day and if it requires extra we'll work it out from there great awesome thanks Tom. thanks andrew and yes we'll let you go have a shower now so, <laughs> so um, all right guys yeah if i have any questions i'll shoot them through for you on on email all right. Thanks, guys. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Okay. See ya. Bye. Okay. And uh, one other quick opportunity is the uh, Service New South Wales Dine Discover. Now, you might have heard that there are, is some tests in place uh, as of March. Uh, Broken Hill and Sydney are part of that. But then it'll be rolled out through the whole of the state. So, you need to jump on as a business if you want to put your activity, your outdoor activity into this opportunity because everyone's going to be able to get their vouchers and if we want them to spend their vouchers in outdoor pursuits. So jump on, make sure you register and people can claim that voucher with you and you still get paid by the government. So um, that's a, a great opportunity if you want to scan that QR code or take you straight to the website to make sure you put your details in there. Um, connect and share is coming up. So we've got uh, next week, as I said, the Nature Play Strategy Update with Amanda. Uh, the next week, we're going to be talking severe weather. And uh, as we know, this is certainly something that uh, we're seeing a lot more of and we've got to factor into our plans and activities as, as, uh, as businesses. So there's a bit of discussion around that. So join us for that one for sure. The 12th of March, um, I'm hoping to bring you our strategic plan after our board uh, looks at it and adopts it. And we'll talk about NOIC, which you can see in my background. Uh, it's been announced that uh, these are the dates. Uh, so lock it in your diary and you'll see more information on tickets and so forth coming out uh, next week. And uh, all the recordings, as you know, are on our YouTube channel. So if you miss anything, jump on there. 
My final comment before I hand over to our guest speaker today is uh, is thanking Jamie uh, in WA. He's our, the CEO of Outdoors WA over there and he departs today on new pursuits and I just want to thank him for everything and I'm sure Dom uh, seconds me in this in the work that he's done with OCA, the Outdoor Council of Australia and all that he's done to contribute to the outdoor industry. It's certainly been a sp inspiring talking to him and watching him um, and uh, being part of, uh, I feel such a short time that I've had with him, but I wish him all the very best for his future endeavors. And I'm sure we'll see him in the outdoors somewhere along the lines. Uh, Don, did you want to say anything else to that? Uh, you've said it beautifully, Laurie, but I don't know, probably a lot, of, a lot of people may not realize the influence that Jamie's had on the outdoor sector across Australia. He was president of the Outdoor Council of Australia for quite a while, um, a role that I'm now doing, but I still talk to him quite regularly about what I should be doing and what the history is and that sort of stuff. And yeah, he's certainly, he's been quite amazing actually. So yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of a sad day with Jamie leaving, but we obviously will keep working with Outdoors WA uh, with his replacement and, um, and their board members over there. So. But he's been yeah, really good as far as making sure that we keep that national perspective in relation to the outdoor sector. I think that's been really valuable um, yeah, in, in relation to what, what we need to do to make the outdoor sector more viable um, right across Australia. So, yeah, he'll be missed. But, um, yeah, it'll be, it sort of shows the value of all the collaboration that we do need to do right across the country. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that, Dom. Um, and then I uh, have our guest speaker for today. So Simon has joined us. He has a company called Exploria. And uh, as I've alluded to in the last couple of Connect and Shares, this is one that really um, is a tool that we can use in our businesses and in our destinations to further engage our customers. So I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let him talk to it. So Simon, did you want to take over control? or give you um, co-hosting rights and then you can take control of the screen. Great, um, and good morning all, thanks Laurie. Um, look, excited to, um, to um, be with you this morning uh, on the Connect and Share. Certainly, I think it's a great forum from uh, what I've seen and uh, you know, the, all the previous episodes. So I'm just going to uh, share uh, my screen so that uh, I can talk to you about um, who Explorer is and, and what it is that we do. Okay, great. So hopefully you can see uh, my screen. Uh, let me know, Laurie, if um, you don't see the Explorer intro screen. Great. Okay, so you know what is the Explorer? Um, so Explorer is about inspiring people around the, for the physical spaces around us. So for us, um, you know, we started off, and you know, a little bit of a history here. Um, you know, I, my, myself and my co-founder. Um, you know, we have three school age kids. Um, you know, we love stories. We love history. You know, we love getting uh, in, into the outdoors and, and trying to engage, you know, with our kids to give them some background on, on what was happening, you know, whether that was in our local area and I, and I live on the northern beaches of Sydney, uh, all the places that we were travelling to within Australia, up and down, you know, the east coast uh, of New South Wales. And what we found as, as we sort of engaged in, in a lot of the local history in, you know, both the, on the northern beaches and around was how much was actually not really well known how much of it wasn't even accessible you know in terms of online or, or printed formats and we really uncovered all these fantastic stories that you know, a lot of them were just folklore and as you spoke to people and and even spoke to uh older you know demographics you kind of really we got a sense that uh, hang on there's a lot of this stuff which is going to go missing so the first thing that we were doing was trying to work out well how were we as you know, people from, um, you know, digital backgrounds who had found a digital business, how can we help to surface a lot of these amazing stories that, that weren't even being, you know, well covered by, you know, local councils. Um, and as we did that, and as we engaged with our kids in those stories, you know, who were using, you know, Pokemon on our phones and, and were constantly grabbing devices, you know, what we realised was that there was a real opportunity here to, to bring together you know, all of these amazing digital tools, um, you know, to create some act interactivity around the digital spaces because, you know, we were struggling to get our kids to get out on a walk. Um, but if we gamified it and we got them to engage in a story in a way that really spoke to their needs, 
then they weren't really thinking about a walk. They were thinking about something fun that they got to do. Um, you know, so for those of you with kids, you, you know that if you say to them, hey, let's go for a walk, you know, they'll, they'll complain until Sunday, <laughs> um, you know, about that. But if you say, hey, let's get out and, you know, do something fun or, we do, you know, we're doing a challenge or something with a question and answer, then they don't really even think about it. And that really put us in place in terms of looking at, okay, how do we actually get people to interact with, with outdoor spaces? How can we get and incentivize particularly children, you know, to get them out and about. And that, and that was really the background of Explorer. It was a combination of, you know, um, bringing to the surface all these, you know, wonderful stories and, and secondly about how to get kids out and about. Um, so what is, you know, Explorer and the challenges that we do in a nutshell? Um, so, you know, uh, again, coming back to the notion of when, you know, we looked around a lot of the, the, the walking trails that you sort of see historically around either locally or, or the local towns that you visit, there are all these mishmash of, of either, you know, printed maps or, or basic stories or, or not at all. So, you know, we saw the, the ability to create a, a templated offer, like the ability to have a consistent experience for people in a digital format as a really strong offer. So around that, you know, we then wanted to curate a proposition that would allow businesses and, and, you know, government entities and anyone within the community, schools and other groups to be able to create different interactive engagements of their own, right? So that could be things like the treasure hunts and, and the engagement that we've seen with kids around mobile Pokemon. Um, you know, the, the concept of geocaching has been around a, a long time and it's very popular in areas like Europe, but you know, it doesn't seem to really have, have um, you know, caught on fire anywhere within, within Australia. Um, I think a lot of that is around how you actually engage and gamify that. Um, and, and, and certainly it's about, you know, creating some of those similar things within a digital format. Um, puzzle solving, you know, we, we saw within the kids and our trials that, you know, when you engage and you give people a challenge, it really what is what brings them to life, right? So, you know, ultimately it's that, it's that question and answer. And, you know, it's really a, a fundamental human trait, you know, to, to have fun and to want to, to actually solve something. And, um, and, and then within that is being able to intertwine, you know, local stories and characters and mystery, you know, where you have that uh, ability, uh, you know, at a very local level. So what Explorer is, is it enables you to, to really activate local areas, right? So really get to be able to get very granular to create, you know, these discovery games and fun games, regardless of, of you know, what you're trying to achieve. So we have this concept that we call challenges, right? And that's what we've really built this, the, the platform around. And it's that ability to create different challenges with some quite unique themes. So here, you know, we've got a, a picture, um, you know, of, of Manly and of North Head. It's obviously a very dense area full of rich history and, and not all, all areas are going to have necessarily um, all the different multi-layers of, of rich history, um, you know, but, you know, what the platform does is enables you to, to create, you know, uh, different themes on an ongoing basis, which we'll go through. So the first thing is, is that, you know, is about creating, a, you know, challenge, which might be around discovery. So, you know, we, we spoke about things like historical walks, um, you know, it, it might be about just about local characters, um, you know, past or even present, you know, what's some of the history or things to even see that you might be able to find around buildings or items. Um, you know, near me, I live at a, a suburb called Kirkhall in Sydney, and there's a you know, there's a, a memorial that sits cemented on the headland that um, that actually has very little history around it. And, you know, when you dig under the covers and, and we found this out from local folklore, from the local historians, was that it was, you know, carried by hand nine kilometres back, you know, uh, just after World War One by some people to, to celebrate their mates that lost their lives. Um, one of the things that we've been working on um, you know, that we think there's great opportunities around, you know, Indigenous trails. Um, so, you know, whether that's, whether they're fictional, um, whether they're based on, on, on historical fact, you know, it, ultimately it doesn't really matter. You know, for us, it's about that there is great opportunities, you know, particularly with, with, with kids, um, you know, to, to uncover more around the Indigenous stories that really a lot of us, you know, miss today. And, and even in, there's, you know, wonderful stories even around, you know, um, the bays of, of, you know, Sydney, which aren't well covered, you know, I mean, I, 
even with a, and a good example is, of this is that there's a great early history of of um, you know the the early Europeans where they first danced um, you know with Aboriginal women on on Forty Baskets Beach, um, and uh, and it's really not a story that's well known. So there's there's some amazing stuff which can be uncovered, and then there's you know crime and mystery and other interesting stuff, and a lot of this is is, is linked ultimately to to true stories. Um, so we sort of put that in one bucket around discovery. And then there's the second element of, of how you can even gamify some of these local areas, right? So, um, you know, and, and so what we've done with Explorer is to, is to build, build a platform that enables you to create a whole lot of trivia and find it funds with things like treasure hunts, um, you know, the ability to go down to your local park. You know, when you think about geocaching and little adventure trails and those types of things, how can you actually easily create those in a digital format that enables people to complete them, whether it's you know a one-off or something, which is an on an, on an ongoing basis. So all types of creative creative puzzles and crack the codes and solve mysteries, which are things that you can just come up with a creative story around. It doesn't need any any history. It really just needs a physical space, something visual, right, for for kids, families, or or older demographics to 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 find, um, you know. And and these are things which I'll, I'll take you through in a moment. Um, and then ultimately what we wanted to do is be able to, to do this in a basis so that, you know, socially and through the, the, the local community is that you can really allow better engagement, right? So how can you actually activate, you know, locals and schools and families to actually create and share their own challenges to bring out, you know, their knowledge and experience of some of those physical spaces or trails or bushland or whatever that might be so that they can then participate you know, and maybe create their own content, which, you know, local operators can use and share. So if we start then looking at the platform, um, you know, when you look around at, you know, all these other different types of engagements, the geocaching or the, you know, the, 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 the printed trail maps and the rest of it, what you quickly find out is that a lot of the usability at times is, is challenged, right? So what we've done is created a, a really easy to use, um, platform for people to be able to engage you know in any of these trails or, or puzzles or challenges in a consistent way right and that's often you know one of the hardest things um, you know to, to do is how can you create that so it's easy for people to to engage with so what we've done is we've created um, that, that ability so they one they're easy to create for operators but secondly they're, they're, they're easy for, for, for users to, to go through so um, so from a templated perspective, uh, you know, you know, uh, it's easy for users to, to register and to start. They can see interactive maps with locations. They get directions and help. Um, and then based on the types of questions or engagements that, you know, that you create for them is that, you know, it then adapts around what those types of questions are. So they might be, you know, solving individual questions and puzzles, uh, which are leading up to a you know, um, you know, an end, an, an end, you know, uh, crack a code or, 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 you know, who was the murderer or solve it style mystery, or they might be even physical challenges. Um, and ultimately, these can also build into things like corporate challenges or points and time ladders, you know, even for kids, for, for school and, and, and for local social competitions. Uh, and we'll go through some examples of those. So then what's also worth noting here is, is that we also wanted to, you um, be able to create an offline experience. So, you know, both for, you know, operators and for areas where there is no connectivity, um, but also really the whole approach that we've taken is not to have kids and people just to, you know, follow their, their, their heads or have their heads into a mobile phone the whole way where they're just following, you know, Google Maps or, or you know, a, an all trail style experience where they're just, you know, following a dotted line on a phone. So the idea of what we're doing is trying to bring back the whole idea of, you know, a little bit of simple navigation and help, but ultimately once they've picked, picked up that basic directional sense and, and help that they've got and maybe a distance indicator, is that they then, you know, either put the phone away or into their pocket until they actually get to that spot for the next stage. So um, it, it's really about trying to engage people in, you know, that idea of, of helping them to identify what is north, south, east, west, to have an idea of what you know distances mean, and and to really kind of have a basic intro intro level of, of navigational skills. 
So in amongst that, I, and I spoke about this, um, is, you know, is that, that ability to, to um, um, intertwine in, you know, traditional history trails and content, be they, you know, European history or, or Indigenous content. Um, I just bring this up because, you know, in areas or for operators that, that want to engage in that local history, if they've got, you know, some, some rich local stories uh, or they want to create, you know, things around, you know, Indigenous content, for example, or, or even, you know, around knowledge around, you know, bushland and, and flora and fauna. Um, as a background is that we've actually built in the ability to, to link in, you know, more than 1 million stories. And this is on a, on a global level. There's, there's, you know, probably, you know, about 50,000 stories um, that, that we've easily linked across Australia. So there is a bunch of content that's already there, um, but we do encourage operators to, to upload and, and create their own content where they need to. So how, how, does, how does this work um, in terms of creation? So, you know, there are, uh, there are some, you know, key simple, simple steps here, which, are, um, which we've broken down into six steps to create these types of trials and, and gamifications. So first of all, it's about using our platform to, to create these challenges, and then you can group them together. So, you know, you might have a, a, a common set of challenges. You might be creating new challenges on a regular you know, basis in, in order to, to encourage people to keep coming back to your area and to, and to engage in, in um, you know, the spaces that, that, that you have. Um, and then you are able to use the platform to customize your content, to link stories or to create your own, and then to create your own help and interactive rules. Um, so it's, it's all pretty easy to do that. The second step is obviously once you've created that and grouped those together is then to you know, promote that, right? Is to let your audiences know about that challenge. So we create a unique URL um, and you can then, you know, uh, uh, either link that through your digital communications and social media, or you can link that on physical signage. So we, you know, um, provide a QR code that you can then easily link people directly through to that challenge um, page through which they can, they can then begin to, to interact. So then third step is, that audiences then use that the guidance that you've and content that you've created, right? They'll head to the start address. You know, we provide links to full mapping in order to get them off there on trail. But as, as I said, our challenge is really aimed at having some basic navigational skills. We're not, you know, really wanting people to have their head down following a, a, a line on, on a Google map um, or an application just on the mobile phone. We're trying to get people off screen as much as possible and just use it as, as a navigational tip. So then as audiences follow your, your directions and help for each stop, they interact with the questions or treasure hunts or historical stories that, that you've created. Um, and then you can set up um, and gamify audience with points and awards. So this is really more aimed at, at kids in particular. Um, you know, and, and we sort of learned this throughout the, you know, our, our early trials was that, you know, that whole idea of points in particular for kids and, you know, that, that you know, pat on the back each time they got something right. Um, you know, and it was very much around participation. And that's kind of, and when, as I take you through, you'll, you'll see that. So, and then um, once that is, you know, all set up, really what it's, it's also then being able to do is, is enabling people to then share results and to encourage other friends uh, and for you to maybe create interactivity around things like, you know, points, leaderboards and other stuff, if it makes sense for, for, for the types of audiences that you reach. And then what we're doing at the moment is actually building out, um, you know, detailed, you know, audience data and statistics so that as people interact, you know, with your digital challenges is that you can actually learn more about, well, who are the people that are doing that regardless of whether you're, you know, you're, it's there on your, your own site or whether it's in public spaces. So you can actually learn more about the, the audiences who are engaging, where they're from, um, and then potentially being able to, to um, do things like, you know, um, you know, capture data on, on some more of those audiences. So um, looking a little bit more in terms of the, the trails and, and challenges that you can set up. So the first thing here to, to note is that, you know, trails and, and challenges can be searchable um, on the Explorer website, or you can set them as private, right? So that they're only accessible directly through your, your own, um, you know, your own digital assets or, or links. Right, so effectively in private mode in the sense that unless someone knows what that specific link is, then you know it won't be discoverable on our map. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is is trying to bring as much promotion, um, you know, to these challenges in these physical spaces as possible. Um, 
So, you know, I'm happy to, to give you some example uh, links as, as part of this. And also, to, and I'll, I'll talk to you at the end about, um, you know, the, the ability to, to, to um, you know, to work with you in, in terms of giving you guidance on the types of content and challenges that you can set up in your own areas. So looking at kids, right, and the types of engagements and interactivity that you can do, right? So um, one of the things that we do get asked about, um, particularly from councils who, you know, who are looking for, you know, the, the, the very, you know, typical types of historical trails where they just want people to go at, from, you know, A to B to C, and they don't really want people to do, you know, Q&A. So the first thing to note is that, you know, um, the question and answer in, in the interactive elements that you can set up you know, uh, are, are all optional, right? And your choices around that um, are really a, a easily stepped through as you, you create and, and set up these challenges. But the types of things that you can do if, if, if you want to create these and you want to assign points and have that gamification is that you can create, um, you know, these themed challenges and they can have all kinds of different question and answer or fine types of experiences. So, um, as you go through those uh, and set up those and think about the creativity around that, you can, from a user perspective, uh, provide things like hints, right? So ultimately, as I said, you know, this is about participation for us um, in terms of, of what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it's not about did the person get this, you know, did the kid or the person get this right or wrong? It's about how can we encourage them to, you know, participate further so you know it's about providing hints should someone be stuck it might even be um, we'll see you know if you can see here in the second example here a stop might even be you know um, uh, this is an example of you know someone um, coming up to you know one of the little fitness style um, gyms that you'll often get in an outside park and it might be an encouragement for kids to find the monkey bars and see how many chin-ups that they can do so then when it when it when it comes down to um, the participation aspects and points awarding, again, you know, we're not doing hard awarding of points here. What we're doing is encouraging people to self-assign what points they deserve, right? Again, this is about participation. And so, you know, with all the questions and answers, right, when, it's, when it is a gamification element, right, um, it's about giving people the answers at each step, right, getting them to engage, and then allowing them to choose how many points they deserve uh, along that pathway. Um, and then obviously there's, you know, the congratulation element. So once, you know, they're, they're, they've, you know, finished each step, it's about giving them the right level of, of, of congratulations, um, you know, and, and, and getting them to participate, as I've said. So look, we know kids generally don't like walks. They like all those things. And there's lots and lots of different examples um, that, that, you know, you can create around what, uh, visually exists in, in the areas where you are. Um, we have some people that do a bit of an element even of, of, uh, of, of local geocaching where they, you know, attach with, you know, little um, zip cords, um, you know, little uh, plastic characters. So, you know, it's even the case where, you know, if, if you don't necessarily have local signs or buildings or things to find that you can build um, challenges from, you know, you can easily also create your own little fun characters. Kids tend to, to, to love that sort of stuff, um, you know, well in, in specific areas. So, you know, lots and lots of different ways that, that we've seen use it. Um, we're looking for more, uh, you know, and, and, and as part of this process, you know, I'd love to get more, more feedback um, around the types of use cases that, that, you know, maybe you've already created or, or that you're looking for within, you know, your local areas. Um, so, you know, what are some of the things and, and ways that, that, um, that, that outdoor operators, you know, can, can what can they do with, with these types of challenges? Um, you know, I've spoken about these, these, but, you know, I guess a lot of different ways that you can reinvent your, your physical spaces, um, you know, and, and, and also be out, being able to create um, educational style programs around those areas. Um, so what we also do in terms of when, you know, when people, uh, interact with these challenges is that we link them together right so we create the concept that um, you know you as operators can create multiple challenges and you can group them together in order to either get people to visit multiple times in order to link multiple destinations together in order to um, you know keep people you know within a physical area for a, for a longer period of time so it's that ability to you know um, enable people 
and kids and families in particular to you know e engage and to earn more points or to you know uh, interact with the, these fun types of puzzles that you might be creating. So we get some you know operators that, that create new challenges um, in, in the same spaces on a regular basis. So the, the 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 point with this is that really it's only limited by your creative you know fun. And what we do see people do is they engage with local storytellers, local students, you know, university and schools and, and, and ask them to interact with their local spaces and, and to come up with, you know, some, some fictional games, um, you know, that can be then used by local operators. And then as you engage with that, you can then, you know, incentivize, you know, uh, customers and audiences, you can get those audiences to, to socialize, to encourage, you know, their friends and, and other families that they know in order to, to see how fast they can do it, how many points they can be awarded, all those types of things. Um, and then, you know, at, at really the base level of at this is getting people um, and, you know, and, and whether that's people, new people traveling to the areas um, that, that you are in, or, or if it's just, you know, locals is, you know, encouraging, you know, uh, social creation. So people being able to, to create those themselves and then to share those um, with you and, and, and for you to then include those within your own um, operations. So commercially, how do we work? Um, so the first thing is that, you know, we're free for personal uh, and not for profit use. So we're really trying to encourage people to get outdoor more, to create more of these. Um, you know, and we're free for, you know, being able to, you know, trial some of these. So I do encourage you to, to, to go online and register and, you know, create, you know, um, some, some challenges and see what it's about. Um, we've recently um, relaunched a whole lot of new features, which is really, uh, I guess, underpinning a lot of what I'm talking um, to you about today. Um, so we, we, we're just about to launch some new um, uh, commercial plans um, and we're working on a whole set of new features, really, which are really aimed at the commercial element, right? And so a lot of that is about, okay, how can you actually capture some more understanding beyond just getting, you know, and providing you know, new digital interactive features for people to stay longer um, and, you know, within your areas, but also what can you learn and capture around the types of people, you know, who are coming and, and engaging in your physical spaces. Um, so some of those features are coming and then we'll be rolling out some new plans as part of that. But really, as, as I guess, as part of this forum, you know, um, is, is we're looking for, for, for more organisations to give us feedback about what they think um, and about, you know, some new use cases um, that they see within their local areas. So, um, you know, happy to, to, to look at providing, you know, um, you know, any of the members for, for Outdoor New South Wales and ACT, you know, some, you know, some access to some of these premium plans in order to, to give more trials. So I guess it's probably that being said, it's probably a good, you know, um, point maybe just to, to um, either stop and offer some questions. And, uh, and other than that, you know, I'm happy to, to give you a look at, um, you know, maybe what it looks like on, on you know, in terms of uh, the live platform, but maybe just before, you know, we do that is just offer any, any, anyone the ability to, to ask questions. Yeah, great, Simon. Thank you. Um, I even got a bit more of an understanding as you're going through, but um, does anyone have any questions? I'm just sort of looking at who's here. Do they see an opportunity in doing anything on this platform or, you know, what are some of the questions that might have come to mind as you, you heard um, Simon speaking. Don't be shy. <laughs> Does anyone see uh, an opportunity for this? I mean, I, I certainly do from my family since <laughs> um, and getting uh, the kids out a lot more. But um, yeah, does anyone see any other possible applications for this? I, I'm thinking of members in particular that could really use this, but they're not online today. So hopefully they might view the recording. Um, last chance, does anyone want to ask anything before Simon jumps into the live version? I think we're good to go to the live version, Simon. How about you take right. a look? <laughs> Great, awesome. Okay, so um, what you can see here is the, the direct link um, to the, the URL of, a, of an individual challenge. So in this case, it's, um, you know, a puzzle trial set up uh, around Middlehead at, at Mossman. 
Um, and, you know, it was, was something created actually by, by my kids. So, um, you know, these types of, of engagements of physical spaces are something that, you know, you can actually have fun with, um, not just in terms of the completion element, but also uh, actually the creation element, right? And so, you know, I do find that, that you can have fun on, on both sides. You know, the challenge for kids is, is probably in the finishing process of that, um, as you might imagine. So, um, look, in terms of um, the types of content that, you know, this will give you a good idea of the types of content um, that, that's included in this. Um, you know, it, you can include some, some you know, rich photos of the different types of destinations uh, and of the stops along the way, right? So this really gives people a full multimedia experience in terms of each stop um, as they're going, but, but also some hero images to, to you know, get, get people engaged in a digital format, right? So a lot of this is about, okay, you know, well before people have even thought about coming to your destination, how can you actually create something which, you know, you know, uh, gives them the curiosity and gives them those extra events and things to do whilst they're there. Um, so look, we, you know, we, we allow you to, to, to set up a, a whole series of, you know, indicators for people up front, you know, um, the type of difficulty, the distances, um, you know, that people will have to either, you know, walk, ride or drive. And I, and I should say that, you know, really it's up to you for your own destinations and, and physical environments as to what types of challenges you can create. Um, you know, and, and, you know, identifying the number of stops and the points available. So we're starting to get into, you know, that gamification element. Um, you know, uh, uh, again, this is about, in most cases, people, you know, um, getting the directional hints and, 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 and tips and, and engaging on a mobile device, which is really kind of it's that, that right element for children around how can you actually get them engaged in it with and using the, the 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 interactive and digital tools and mobile tools that we have today, but without losing them to it, which was an, an issue that we had with the whole with you know with po when you look at Pokemon as an example of a game is that you very quickly lose them to staring at the phone the whole time, which is again something that we're trying to avoid. Um, so look, it's it's that ability to, to to you know create some content, get people excited from you know a, a, from a digital standpoint from when they're not at your physical destination. Um, that ability to, 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 again, see what, you know, the, the map is, I can, you know, you can get to a starting point, they can see what those and interact with the, the maps um, before even they get started. Um, now, the moment that you click on get started, and um, you, this is the process for both um, print um, and, you know, digital formats, is that, you know, effectively what we're doing is that we're wanting to provide some measurement, right? So it's about timing and collection of points because these are the types of things that do engage children in particular. We're trying to create, and not everything needs to have this style of interactivity, but for those challenges and for those audiences um, which work, you know, it's about, um, you know, encouraging and, and having that as, as an option. I like um, also when you said about the iPad, like you could actually make it, not visible so it becomes a tool that the businesses can promote solely for people that are already engaged in their products so that i think that's yeah a really good distinction to make it's like a value add um and they can just yeah. they get that qr code from the operator would they yeah that's right so that look at the end of the day you can you know encode your own url right? there's lots of um, url encoders around i mean at the end of the day we give you um you know a unique url you know, which you can send to audiences. We just don't expose it on our search engine, right? So you can either use our promotion. And the reason that this came about, um, and you can also have them in a private mode because we've also been working with some schools, right? So and there's two things to this. We've had some PNC committees that use and create groups of challenges together as a charity driver, right? So obviously with COVID, you know, they can't do their traditional drunk trivia nights, um, and so in this case, it was, and I look, this, is, this is the positive elements to it as well, right, was that rather than just have your, your trivia nights, which are traditionally around, you know, um, drinking a lot of community positivity out of that. But in this case, you know, they were created, um, you know, four challenges around the local park and the local areas and the local school. Um, and, you know, it was about engagement and physical activity, you know, in terms of those things. And it was also an easy way for people to donate, you know, $60 to engage in those four challenges, right? So, um, you know, and, and, and that was a really pos positive way. But, and, but what came out of the engagement with schools and with teachers was that they were looking for, 
you know, class specific, you know, engagement and how could they encourage kids to maybe create content, but keep it within a, a more private class community. So um, that's kind of where some of that, that element came out of, um, you know, but certainly we're looking for, for, for more feedback on the types of things that, that operators might, might need. Mm. So look, we're here at, at stop number one. Um, you know, we've started a challenge, you know, that the time is going, we've got, you know, we've got X amount of points uh, available. So again, it's up to you as to, to how you set up the challenge and to what and how you want to gamify this in particular. So look, again, it's about um, giving people a directional sense. You're looking for a dirt path heading in a specific direction. We've got a distance, um, you know, and then we've got a, a, a description you know, um, around what we're doing. So once we found the specific stop that we're looking for, we're then indicating, okay, I'm here physically. What is the question that we need to answer? So in this case, we had to find an old telegraph pole and, you know, it's a simple visual element, right? How many old brown electricity insulator knobs can we find at the top of the pole? So, you know, we're gonna count these and great, I got that right. Um, ultimately, we're then gonna, you know, determine, self-determine what the points are that we should be getting for this answer. So, you know, ultimately in things like family groups, these can be done, you know, by the, the parent um, or whoever's in control of, of it, or it could be done if, the, you know, if the child is, is, is old enough. So the, obviously here I'm, I'm focusing on um, what uh, a challenge is that, that is really aimed more, I guess, at a family style um, uh, audience. So stop two. We're now looking for, you know, uh, an obelisk. We've got a visual guide here um, and, you know, there's a bit of a story around it. So and that's the, the interesting thing that you're able to create, I guess, through, through areas where you do have some historical points where there is both, um, you know, visual elements and, and, and interesting historical um, stories that, that go with it. Um, so again, once we found it, we can then um, create a, a question around that. Um, how many stone blocks high is the white obelisk marker from 1858? So um, again, you're just encouraging something that's visual. You know, a lot of these questions, you know, are really just about you know using markers visually that that create challenges for kids. So um, again, uh, it's up to 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 you know the the people who are running um, you know the, the 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 challenge themselves as to self award what these points might be. So. Um, so in this case, yeah, it's, it's about, as I said, it's about that particip participation right. element. So look, that's probably a good, I mean, you know, you know, without necessarily going through all the stops and, and ultimately at the end, we'll, you know, we would get to a summary page um, on that. I think it's probably a good point there to pause and see if there's any, any questions yeah. about. Have a, a play as well. Um, obviously I've had a bit of a play on the website uh, and can see some uses, and uh, particularly with the schools, um, I think this is this is great to start getting more outdoor learning happening as well. But um, I'll quickly open up for questions, and we've got one last thing we've got to cover before we finish at eleven. Um, so, any questions from anyone after you've seen the rest of Simon's presentation? They sound like they have all their questions answered, Simon. <laughs> Great. If anyone does, that or I've confused everyone. But look, <laughs> if, um, if you do have any questions and and do want to find out a little bit more, look, we're you know um, really open at the moment to um, to working with you to to um, you know create content and new experiences. I mean, with all of that new development, you know, funds that that are available, right? It does give you the ability, you know, to look at new opportunities to engage with content creators, right? Who can help shoot, help capture a lot of that local content to create, you know, local experiences, um, you know, in in your area, and you know, these are the types of things that you can do. I mean, if you look at Port Macquarie as an area in New South Wales, you know, they are big on their koalas and they have these physical structures everywhere, and and trails as an example. Now, that's a you know, really, I, I guess, a good example of the types of things that you might be. Be able to think about but you can do it on a much more micro and, and repetitive and basis. Reinvent the wheel because it's already a platform here for you to do. Yeah that's awesome. Thank you again Simon. Exactly. Really really appreciate it. Your contact details are there. So if anyone yep. wants 
to reach out to Simon. If you think of something later, email me. I'll flick it through to Simon. And, and thanks for coming on. You got introduced to us by our kids book who were on last year. So, so there's some great stuff happening that I think we can, we can certainly connect with. So thank you again and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks, everyone. Um, and that's Australia-wide. Uh, Dave's just asked, is it New South Wales or Australia-wide? But you're, you're doing the whole of Australia, if not overseas as well, from what I understand. Yeah, it's it's a global platform um, in, in terms of what we do. But look, for the moment, you know, our, our interest is just on, on you know, um, surfacing and, and interacting around Australia, right? So i um, really excited to hear about, you know, um, I guess local, other local areas that, that um, you know, you'd love to, to build challenges around. So by all means, um, my email address there is simon.vella at, at explorer.me. So, um, yeah, I'd love for, for you to get in touch. Right. Now, guys, we have one last thing that um, I've asked Helen to talk to. Um, Helen, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, just give everyone a bit of a snapshot of what we're talking about? Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, at the end of last year, uh, a guy called Peter Horton was on the Zoom, this Zoom, talking about um, an Aboriginal program that he was getting up and running uh, in Western New South Wales. At the time, I was super interested and I was really keen to kind of hear more and put up my hand to get involved in developing it. And I've realised that it's a lot bigger than just me as an individual kind of working like mad on other things. So it's an amazing opportunity. Um, it's called the, uh, it's a partnership between the Department of Sport, Red Eye, which is an Aboriginal um, kind of training and employment organisation, a community paddling group, and they're looking for um, a hiking partner to develop a commercial operation with, with them. Um, it's basically young Aboriginal people walking on country and walking and canoeing on country um, in places like Wilcannia, uh, Brewarrina, Burke, Menindi, um, on that sort of Darling River area. Um, they've done one pilot and they're doing a second pilot on the, at the end of March. Um, and I guess the ultimate vision is to develop a cross-cultural exchange between kind of school kids in Sydney walking with young Aboriginal people in Western New South Wales. Um, it's got a, a huge potential um, and it just seems like they're really uh, keen to put some money behind it as well. So I guess if, if anybody on the Zoom or if anybody knows of any uh, organisation or, you know, any businesses or companies who are keen to develop it, um, I can get in touch with Laurie and she can give you Mark's details um, or get in touch with me and I'm happy to pass on any information to you about it. Beautiful. Um, it was up to 25 years old, wasn't it, the age group? I can't remember. Uh, so at the moment they're working with 12 to 14-year-old uh, kids and some of the participants of the last program are coming along as mentors for this program but they're looking at using some of the sort of older people in the red eye program to to be mentors and to kind of uh, be employed by the program as well okay yep beautiful sorry that was my fault I had something to um yes yeah, so i just said um yeah might talk to you there's some funding opportunities as well yes mm. yeah Awesome. So, yeah, it's an amazing, um, amazing program. And, yeah, if anybody has the passion and the, you know, the, the drive to, to do it, I'd thoroughly recommend it. And Mike, Mark is a lovely guy to, to work with as well. Gorgeous. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Helen. Really appreciate you bringing that to everyone's attention. And, um, yeah, as I say, as you say, if you're interested, reach out to either Helen or myself and we'll put you in contact. But, yeah. Um, such an important program for, for that area. I do a lot of work out there and so excited to see this get off the ground. Awesome. Thank you. And look at that, 10.59, turning over 11 now. So thank you, everyone, again, for joining us for another Connect and Share. We hope to see you next week. And uh, have a fabulous weekend. And uh, don't forget, if you want to drink at 4 o'clock, we have happy hour. And uh, we'll see you either there or next week at Connect and Share. Take care.